Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyra. Today, October 14th, 11 months ago, I came to New Zealand and I was full of hope, excited, didn't know what was to come, but definitely looking forward to living in New Zealand. I arrived in Auckland and I didn't have a plan really on what I was going to do, where I would end up. 11 months later, I'm here based out of Wellington. I live in a nice, beautiful apartment. I have a job and I've made Wellington my new home. So I'm super excited to share with you my decision to extend my visa and live in New Zealand, specifically Wellington. This video will overview a lot of the steps required for an extension on the working holiday visa for Canadians. And before we get into the process more in depth, I just wanted to do a very, very clear disclaimer that I am not an immigration advisor. This advice is not intended to replace the professional advice of an immigration advisor. I'm simply sharing my tips and experience as a Canadian applying for an extension on my working holiday visa scheme in New Zealand. So if you didn't know, Canadian citizens who are here in New Zealand on a working holiday visa can extend the one year by an additional 11 months. To apply for this extension, you literally have to just be in New Zealand. That's an eligibility. You also have to be on the working holiday visa initially. You have the option when you first apply for the one year or the two year, which is essentially a year and 11 months. At the end of the first year, I didn't know if I'd have loved it, if I was ready to go home, if things just didn't work out. I really wouldn't know where my head would be at, what my life looked like, and what I wanted personally because things change and you never really can predict how the whole year will go. So for my planning purposes I went for the one year working holiday visa initially which was an easy process. I have a whole video outlining my decision for why I wanted to leave, why I chose New Zealand to live, and how I applied for the working holiday visa. I'll link it in the cards and also if you have any questions on that, that video should answer them for you. This video is going to focus on the process and my experience for extending Ending my working holiday visa because Canadians have the option to do that and that's an amazing opportunity because it allows me to continue to live and work in New Zealand which now that I'm here hindsight 2020 I do want to stay longer and I've made that decision so once I decided that I wanted to extend my visa I went and applied I went through the whole application process which I will go over in this video in depth and I recently found out that it was approved I'm good to go to stay in New Zealand for an additional 11 months and that brings me up one year from today, so I'm super happy about that. I sent my application with all the required supporting documents for my application by mail to the Auckland Immigration Office. I did that on July 31st and I got word that my application was approved by email from immigration on September 14th. So that's 45 days total from the moment I mailed out my application to the moment that I received the approval from immigration via email. So first, let's just go over the cost breakdown because I feel like that's something that people really want to know. How much does it cost to extend the visa? And that's in addition to the cost that I needed to spend on the first year of my working holiday visa. So the extension cost of the visa is more than the initial one year. So the extension is 280 and that's just for the visa. Then there are costs associated with all of the supporting documents and steps that you'll need as a part of this application. These steps include an immigration medical, mandatory medical travel insurance for the additional 11 months of coverage that you'll need, printed passport style photos that go along with your application, and any postage fees because as I said this application does have to be sent by mail. So the total I paid for everything was 1,225 New Zealand dollars, but keep in mind that all of these additional costs outside of the cost of the visa itself, which doesn't change, but the other costs do change and they will vary depending on what you choose to go through. So for example, the immigration medical price is not standardized across the country. It depends where you go to get your medical done. I chose to get my medical done in Wellington, which tends to have more of a higher price range for immigration medicals. So I spent $525 on my immigration medical here in Wellington, which did include a chest x-ray. Same thing for price variation goes for the medical travel insurance. It depends on what policy you purchase, who you go with to buy your policy from, what other items that you may want to add into 
your policy that costs a bit more, like premiums on personal belongings. So for me, my cost was $400 for the additional 11 months. That's including travel, medical, emergency insurance, but it also includes coverage for my personal belongings. For me, it was really important to insure my personal belongings because I actually had to do a claim for belongings that were stolen from me. So I realized the worth of having insurance and making sure that you're covered for the unexpected. So I really highly recommend you think a little bit harder about the insurance you get. Not to mention insurance is mandatory, so you have to have it regardless. So moving on to the actual application. Part of the application is completing an Immigration New Zealand form 1223 or 1223. can be found online on the Immigration New Zealand website. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, you cannot apply for this extension online, so you do have to print out the form 1223, fill it in by hand, and mail it in. The 1223 form also comes with a very detailed checklist on all the required documents that you're gonna need to send in with your application, so make sure you're checking that checklist using it because it's there to help you make sure that you fill in the application correctly because you do not want to miss information. If you do fill out 1223 form incorrectly or you don't include all the supporting documents that are mandatory, it will delay processing of your application and it could result in you holding up the time you'll hear back. So you just really want to make sure you're making it as easy as possible for New Zealand Immigration to process your application for the extension. Okay, so we're moving on to the immigration medical. You need to get an immigration medical done as part of this application for an extension because that means you're now going to be in New Zealand longer than a year, which means if you have any underlying existing medical conditions, it could potentially be a strain on the New Zealand healthcare system. So that's why an x-ray of your chest is needed and that's why you also need a full physical medical examination done. Now the immigration medicals need to be done at certified medical clinics to make sure whatever clinic you're booking with because there's different ones that you can pick from is on the list found online on the New Zealand immigration website. So for me, I booked Life Clinic in the CBD area of Wellington. I went for Life Clinic not because it was the cheapest, but because it was the easiest. It was convenient in the sense that you went to them, they did your medical and you paid them for the medical as well as the chest x-ray and the clinic facilitated the appointment at an external radiologist clinic to get your chest x-ray done. They did the booking for you, they took care of the payment, so you only had to pay the clinic one set price at one point in time during your appointment and then you're good to go. Everything else is taken care of for you. If you choose to go the route of booking a medical examination for the physical separately from the radiologist, it just adds a little bit more steps and coordinating and scheduling for you. So personally, I avoided that, separating it out and found a clinic that just did it all together for you. So my medical examination was on the same day as my radiologist appointment to get the x-ray done. Everything was done in an afternoon and it was really easy and convenient that way for me so I was willing to pay a little bit more to the clinic to offer that service. So I actually have no complaints with the clinic I went to. There was a little bit of wait time in between people and waiting to see doctors and nurses and there was a lot of other people there getting immigration medicals done but I mean that's like standard something that Canadians were used to waiting to see a doctor and you know the doctors are always late and you're waiting around so that's nothing new. I was expecting a bit of a delay. The doctors were friendly, the nurses were really good, so I do recommend them and I'd go back to them if I did need to get another medical done in the future. So you need to make sure you have your passport with you when you get this medical done. They actually ask for it and they link your passport to your actual appointment and the results and a file that's created for you that will then be sent with your results once they're ready to New Zealand Immigration directly. So the first thing you do at the appointment is complete several forms. They're going to ask you family medical history questions, demographic information about your yourself. If you have any existing medical conditions, they're going to ask you to list them. And of course, they're going to ask you some COVID-19 related questions as well. And you won't even even be allowed in the clinic if you have COVID-19 symptoms. So that's just something that's kind of new to the process now that we're in a pandemic world at the moment. And the other thing they did was they just came up and took my picture with a digital camera and then they link that photo to your file as well, which will then match up to the picture that you provided for the application. So the physical starts with a urine 
test, you go ahead and do that first and then you move on to waiting to see the nurse. Once you see the nurse, the nurse then checks your blood pressure, your height, your weight, your eyesight, and then takes vials of your blood. After you see the nurse and they complete all the tests that they need, you then go back into the waiting room and wait to see the doctor who's then going to do the full physical. Finally, when the doctor's ready to hear from you, I had a nice gentleman doctor. They asked if I wanted to have a female in the room to accompany me since it was a male doctor. I don't need a female to accompany me in the room, but I just thought that was interesting that that's part of their steps and considerations for their clients. So another reason why this clinic was pretty good. But the doctor will go over the forms that you completed at the beginning of the appointment. They will ask about the family medical history that you may have indicated. And then they'll ask you to strip down and put a gown on and the doctor will perform a physical exam on you, touching, you know, the large organs on your stomach and things and your knees and legs just to make sure nothing is out of sorts, I suppose. I'm not really sure what that physical exam checks. They check your joints, so they're getting that, you know, mallet thing that they knock on your knees and stuff. He checked my eyesight with the tools and also used the tool for the ears, checked into my ears, so it's a full physical. So once that physical's done, you get back dressed into your clothes, you sit down with the doctor, chat a bit more about what he may have found in that physical exam, and then he'll give you a referral slip to the radiologist. So this is a separate form referring you to get that chest x-ray done. So the radiologist clinic is at a different location. So once they do that, then you're all set, you're done at the medical side of things for the physical checkup. On your way out, the receptionist will give you a form. So it's going to have your personal information that you provided printed on there, as well as a very important number related to your medical file. This is your New Zealand immigration medical file number that needs to be written in the 1223 form so that it's associated with your application for the extension. The clinic will send the results of your test directly to New Zealand Immigration, but they will also want to reference it back to the number on that form that they give you. So make sure that you're writing that down. They'll also give you a form that's printed out in a paper version. I just went ahead and included that in my application because there's no reason for me to hold on to that paper copy of like my personal details and medical conditions and things like that. So just to solidify the fact that I got a medical done, I included that into my application that I then mailed on to New Zealand Immigration. So overall, my medical part of the immigration medical, it took two hours at the doctor's office. So it wasn't short. There is a lot of waiting around and I think that's what kind of contributes to how long it takes. But I mean, it really wasn't that bad. So the off I was rushing to my radiologist appointment, which was right after I finished seeing the doctor. I actually made it there while the radiologist went on lunch. So half an hour later, I went back and I handed in my referral slip from the doctor to get an x-ray done. They asked to see my passport. So once I showed them my passport and my referral, I waited to see the radiologist and this part was so fast. So I get into the room. She says, hi, nice to meet you. You're here for a chest x-ray. Yes, okay. Please strip down from the top up, including bra, and take your jewelry off. And then she looked at the length of my hair and said, and please put your hair up as well. I was like, okay. So <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So I stripped down my top half and everything and take the jewelry off and I put on the gown that they give you a little like shirt gown and you just stand in front of you know a device that I don't know what it is but you just stand in front of like a wall thing and she positions the x-ray machine she goes behind a wall takes the photo in like three seconds you're done and she says okay thank you for coming in today and the whole radiologist appointment once I was like through waiting to actually see her took like three minutes so it was super fast I mean the longest part Part of the appointment was getting undressed and getting redressed so I mean it's very painless obviously a little uncomfortable with having to strip down but she's not there watching you so that was my immigration medical experience I really didn't have any major complaints aside from the price which was $525 that hurt a little but also it's mandatory so there's no way around it it's just one of the expenses that you just have to pay as part of the extension on the working holiday visa Moving on to the photograph section of supporting documents you'll need. So the photographs are literally like a passport style photo, but please be careful because there are specific measurements that are on the 1223 form that you'll need to adhere to. So make sure that the place that you go knows the measurements on the sizing of the photo that immigration is requesting because it may or may not be a passport size photo depending on where you go. So I just went to my local chemist, if I'm being honest. It was super easy. They do passport style photos, 
immigration photos. It was $15, not a lot, not the cheapest, but not crazy either. I've heard people only pay $12. I've seen immigration photos be advertised for $20. So it just depends where you go. That didn't take long at all. They printed it on the spot for me and I had four sets of photos. I included two photos with my application because that's all they needed. The requirements for the immigration New Zealand photo are different than the passport. So one of the major ones is you cannot have your hair in front of your ears. You have to tuck your hair behind your ears. Another thing is they don't want you behind a white background. So you need to really read the requirements, the do's and don'ts on the Immigration New Zealand website for the kind of photos they're looking for because you don't want your application rejected on a stupid technicality because you didn't take your pictures correctly. Well, let's move on to passport certification. Part of the application requires you to send your original passport or, which is the option I chose, you can send a certified photocopy of your passport. This photocopy has to be certified by Justice of the Peace or JP who can authorize and certify that the likeness of you in the photocopy is indeed you and verifies by looking at your original passport in front of you. So this is a process I really didn't know anything about. I have never had anything certified by JP before so apparently it's just a free service here in New Zealand you go get something certified like a birth certificate these JPs look at the photocopy certify it on the spot because usually you can go to I don't know a courthouse or some kind of place where a JP is just on call for a certain set amount of hours in a day and they're accepting people to wait in line and see them freely without an appointment I recommend that that's the way to go so just have a search of your local area JPs usually in a courthouse or some kind of similar situation so form 1223 does say that providing a certified photocopy of your passport instead of providing the original may delay processing of your application but honestly I was not willing to give my passport up for what ended up being 45 days of waiting to hear back so I don't regret not sending my original passport if you're in a position where you think you could you could give it a try but I really don't think it's necessary and my application was processed fairly quickly given the COVID delays I think and sending a certified photocopy really didn't impact it at all so it's up to you I chose to do certified. You could choose to send your original, but just make sure that you send something. <laughs> Something else you'll need to include in the application is proof of funds. So you just print out a statement of your bank statement on, in Canada or in, in New Zealand. Make sure that you can prove that if you don't have a return ticket booked to Canada after that 11 months that you have enough to support yourself and enough funds to buy a plane ticket home to Canada. The next step is make sure you include proof of your extension of coverage for travel medical insurance. To shop around, find a policy that works for you. I went with Orbit Protect Health coverage as well as personal belongings coverage. Mine cost $400 for the additional 11 months, but I did pay a high premium on one item, my laptop, so that I made sure that it was covered in the event anything happened. If you don't have to pay high premiums, the cost of your coverage on what policy may not be that high. Once you do settle on a policy, just make sure you print the certificate of your policy that the insurance provider will email to you and include that printed certificate in your application and that's good enough proof that you've purchased insurance coverage for the additional 11 months. And the last step of your application is getting ready to send it out. So make sure you have all those required documents with you. You've printed out all the things you need down from getting your immigration medical, including that form they give you all the way to proving that you have enough funds to support yourself by printing a bank statement. Put all those bits and bobs into an envelope or you can just go to the post service nearest you, pay for an envelope that's prepaid postage. So it's an envelope that you don't have to buy a stamp for because it's already included in the price of that envelope. That's what I did. I made sure that I sat down at the post office, put together all my little documents, including the photos, every little paper, double, triple checked my application before I sealed the envelope, handed it on for delivery in the mail, and that was it. My application was sent out into the world, and I really just sat back and waited to hear anything from New Zealand Immigration. So that's it. Those are the steps you need to take to apply for an extension on the working holiday scheme in New Zealand for Canadians. I hope that you got something useful out of this 
video. If you have any more questions about the process that I didn't cover in the video, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer it for you. Overall, the process went all right. I do wish that New Zealand Immigration would make this available to apply online. There was a lot of steps involved and you really need to make sure you have all your eggs in order in order to make sure this application will be processed. I did call and follow up on my application with New Zealand Immigration after that 30 day window was passed. And after I followed up with them, a week later I heard back that I was approved by email. Who knows, maybe my call helped, maybe it just was on its way to be approved anyways, I'll never know. But all I know is I'm approved and I'm set to stay here in New Zealand for an additional 11 months. I'm so excited to spend another 11 months here in New Zealand because that means I can continue to live and work here and just get that, I don't know, the ultimate dream of me living abroad is happening and the year flew by so literally I feel like I do need another year, especially with a lockdown thrown in the first year. It just really staggered things a bit and prolonged me getting a job and all of that so I'm really happy that I have more time here. Stick around this channel, you'll see a lot more vlogs of me living and working in New Zealand, sharing my experience. Thanks for watching this video. Take care, happy travels, and I'll see you next time. Bye!